All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Raleigh, North Carolina and Reynolds Coliseum. We'll get the uh, first round NCAA tournament event underway here with the uh, Tennessee Players press conference. Um, I'd like to remind everyone, number one, to please turn off your phones. Uh, we'd also like to remind you there is no flash photography during the press conferences, no video recording. Uh, if you have a question, please raise your hand and uh, wait until the microphone gets to you to ask the question. Uh, for today, if you could help us out and just give us your name and the uh, affiliate that you're representing, we would appreciate that. Uh, the student athletes we have today are Rakia Jackson and Jewel Spear. And we'll go ahead and open up the floor for questions. Please raise your hand if you have a question. Let's go ahead and start with Bob. Bob Sutton with the Associated Press. Ricky, what, what, Coach Harper's going to probably give, be getting a lot of attention here this week. What do you think it means for her to be coaching at her alma mater? Um, I think it means a lot um, to come back to a place where you kind of started. Um, I'm, I'm just proud of where she is now, and her being a coach at Tennessee just means everything to us. So um, I'm just grateful that her journey is what her, what her journey was, and she's here now. So. All right, other questions? Go up front here, please, Chapman. Lindsey Gibbs with Power Plays. This is for, I guess, for both of you. Obviously, last time we saw you on the court, it was a heartbreaking loss. How, what have the past couple of weeks been like responding to that, and how did the team come together in that tough moment? Jewel, could you please go first? Yeah, I would say that, you know, um, it was a tough game, um, but our focus is on this current game, um, Green Bay. Um, and we've been preparing for them uh, this whole week. Uh, we feel prepared going into the game, um, confident and mentally. Um, we feel really great going into the game as well. Rakia, do you have anything to add? No, I agree. Okay. Got another question? Can we get the mic back up here, Chapman? Well, in that second, my brain just completely blanked out. But <laughs> I will uh, regroup and uh, go. Um, Oh, Tennessee's been, it's now record 42 straight uh, tournament appearances, only school to have that. What does it mean to you two to be a part of that legacy? Rakia, could you answer that? It means a lot to be a part of that history, um, especially being the only school to have done it. Um, I'm just grateful that we were able to extend the streak, and I feel like it's just going to go on forever, honestly, um, given the Lady Vol rich history. So um, it's pretty cool to be a part of it. Jewel, do you have anything to add? Yeah, I agree with uh, Kia. I would just say it's a historic program. You know, a lot of greats before us, and um, we're just continuing uh, the success here. Uh, let's go to Bob over here real quick. Jewel, you're familiar with the ACC territory here. Uh, what's it like to be back um, in this neck of the woods, and um, what are your memories of Reynolds? Yeah, um, I am pretty familiar uh, with this area playing here, you know, my first three years uh, in this stadium um, against them. Um, but it's always loud in here. Um, we know our fans are going to come support us, so it's going to be a great environment. Um, but first, we have to, you know, take care of uh, the first game to even move on to the second game. So uh, all of our focus right now is with Green Bay. Um, I also have like a lot of family in this area as well, in the North Carolina area, so excited to see them to come out as well. Sure, go ahead. Did you have any big games here or anything of note? Um, I know Wake generally plays here every year. Um, <clears throat> I honestly don't remember. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't remember like stat-wise or anything, um, but like I said, it's a great environment here, so uh, excited for that again. Let's go to Lindsay. Jules, just kind of building on that last time I spoke with you, was the ACC tournament last year when you had that great run and um, reflecting on this past year and taking the move to Tennessee and now this year getting to be part of the NCAA tournament. Mm -hmm. Is there anything kind of surprised you about this journey or what's kind of stood out to you over this past year? Um, I wouldn't say surprised me. Um, you know, coming to Tennessee, I wanted to be on the big stage and, you know, 42 straight NCAA tournaments kind of speaks for itself. So just being a part of this history with, you know, great players. Um, wanting to come here and play with Rakia, uh, great player. Um, role model for me really on and off the court and has helped me in so many ways. Um, so 
uh, really just excited for this moment and just taking it all in. Do we have any other questions in the room? All right, let's take a shot at the uh, Zoom. We have Gabriella Lewis. Gabriella, do you have a question? Hi, y'all. Gabriella Lewis, the next. This one's for both of you. Um, you know, we talked about how you made it to all 42, but how do you deal with the pressure of that? You know, this is one of the few programs where a sweet 16 can maybe feel like a letdown. So how do you deal with the pressure of that reputation and kind of putting your head down to win? Ricky, could you go first, please? Yes. Um, I feel like we just have to take it um, day by day. Uh, we never look ahead at our opponent. We know each opponent in front of us is the main focus, and I feel like we've been doing just that. And so that just, you know, kind of calms the pressure down for us because it's not like we're like, oh, we got to beat this team, then we got this team next. It's just like let's just focus on what's on our plate right now. Let's not try to make our plates too big. So I feel like that just helps a lot. Jewel, do you have anything to add? <clears throat> Same thing as Kia said, really, just taking it game by game. Um, because, like like we both said, like you can't move on to the next round until you win the first round. All right, now let's take a question from Maria. Maria, what's your question? Uh, this is Maria Cornelius with 247 Sports Tennessee. Rakia, a year ago, you were playing in your first NCAA tournament. You knew you had another year. You wanted to take it. Obviously, you don't anymore. You've got big things ahead of you, obviously, coming for you in, in the WNBA. How do you keep yourself focused on, on the task at hand and sort of not looking ahead and, and sort of focusing on what's right in front of you right now? Um, just knowing what our bigger goal is as a team. Um, we just want to win. Um, you know, you lose one game, your season is over, and that's just enough motivation for us. Um, I feel like we come in and practice each and every day like it's our last, so um, that helps a lot. And just, you know, looking at these ladies, knowing I don't want to let them down, and they got my back and I got their back, it just speaks for itself, and, you know, we just go hard for each other. All right, are there any other questions for the student athletes? All right, ladies, thank you very much. You're excused. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, Coach Harper will start in 13 minutes.
We're uh, ready to head on to the coach part of the Tennessee press conference. I'd like to remind you once again to please silence all your phones. No flash photography, no videoing allowed. Um, if you have a question, please raise your hand and wait until we get the microphone to you. Uh, we have Coach Kelly Harper. Coach, if you could please give us an opening statement. Yeah, we're excited. Um, March Madness time. You know, it's been fun to watch games both on the women's side and the men's side the, the last couple of days. And um, just, you know, really thrilled to be a part of it um, and look forward to the opportunity ahead of us. All right, thank you, Coach. If you have a question, let's start with Lindsay and then we'll get Ernie. Well, let's get Lindsay first and then we'll do Ernie. Lindsay Gibbs with Power Plays. Coach, do you feel like you're a little bit on the episode of the game show, like, look at your life, this is your life? <laughs> with this bracket, how would you think when you when you saw kind of the group that was going to be here in Raleigh, and what does it mean to be back here? Yeah, um, I actually have not been back uh, to Raleigh uh, in 11 years. So, um, obviously, the, the Coliseum looks different, looks amazing, um, you know, just – uh, being back just brings back a lot of memories, a, a lot of great people, um, so, some really good times. So um, that's that's always fun. We 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 knew um, numerically the that it was a possibility um, uh, prior to the selection show, but um, you know it's part of it's NCAA tournament. It's just part of um, part of the excitement. You know, uh, traveling and going back, going somewhere new. It's always always fun. All right, Ernie. Hey, Wolfpack Sports Radio, welcome back. Um, I, part of my question was a question she asked, but um, you know, coming back into Reynolds Coliseum, you led the Wolfpack Women's Program for a number of years. Uh, what did you think about the seating? Uh, what did you like? Did you did you like? Is this the place I wanted to come back to, or whatever? I had to ask you a question. I don't know that any coach. Um, I'm not sure that there's any coach that's ever going to sit at a press conference and say, I like our draw. <laughs> no coach is ever going to say that. You know, we, we know we've got um, a tough opponent in Wisconsin Green Bay, and, um, you know, we're, we know we're in an exciting coliseum here at Reynolds. Um, I know there will be fans in the stands, and, um, you know, we hope several of them have on orange. But uh, it, it should be a great environment and great basketball. Let's go on the edge there. Um, after the All-American teams came out this week, Jasmine Powell had posted that Rakia Jackson is your guys' as Michael Jordan. Um, I just wonder if I get your thoughts on that. Yeah, you know, um, I get it. Everybody has their opinion. Our opinion is she's an All-American. I mean, I think she's uh, one of the ten best players in the country. Uh, I do. Um, but, um, you know, she's – She's got a pretty level head. She she gets it, and um, you know we're proud of her and and who she is and what she's done for us. Any other? Let's go right back there, and then we'll get Bob, and then we'll do Lindsay. <coughs> uh, let's get. Yeah, there you go. Um, just with the ups and downs of the season, what do you feel like this team has learned about handling the emotions of, you know, the game and what a potential tournament run with, you know, such high highs and maybe low lows? Like, what do you think that they've learned about handling the emotion of this game that will help them with this tournament? Yeah, I think we've had um, we've had adversity, and I think we've handled it at times. And I think at times we we did not handle it as well as we wanted to, and I think we grew. Uh, I think there was a lot of growth um, during during our season, um, I, I think our team has stayed pretty steady. And I think that's been one of our strengths. You know, we I think we do keep our emotions in check pretty well in, in, in our last, you know, month or so of games. And I think that's helped us because uh, I'll tell you what, it's, you know, there's, there's been a lot of big games, a lot of high emotion in those games. And I think us being able to uh, stay consistent and stay steady has been good for our team. Let's get Bob here. Bob Sutton with the Associated Press. When you were a player at Tennessee, did you ever envision that you'd be coaching the team, or was that ever a goal of yours? No. <laughs> no, I think, um, you know, as a player at Tennessee, at one point I realized I wanted to coach college basketball, didn't know what that would look like. But I sure did not think it would be at the University of Tennessee. And I'll, I'll tell you a little why. Um, 
Pat Summit was the coach at Tennessee. And for us, she's this being that is always going to be there. You never thought that anyone else would coach at Tennessee. That's You just didn't feel like that was an option. So uh, it really wasn't anything that crossed my mind as a realistic goal when I, when I was a player. Okay, Lindsay. Got two questions. Um, first of all, obviously it was just such a heartbreaking loss in the SEC tournament. What have the last uh, 10 days looked like? Was there time off? How have, have you learned anything from how your team has responded from that? Yeah, we had some, we had some time off. Uh, it was an uh, excruciating loss. I mean, it was very heartbreaking uh, the way that the game was played out and, and finished. So it was, a, it was pretty difficult for each player and staff member, to be honest with you, to recover. Uh, but we had some time off, and I think it was really good for us. Uh, also corresponded with their spring break, so they – they really were able to to rest, recuperate, and then we got back in the gym. And I thought they had really good energy. I thought they had really good focus, um, and and had really good bounce back. Um, and then after the after the draw, we've been um, you know a little bit more specific in in our practices on who we're focusing on now. And you know, I've liked I've liked how they came to practice each day, and I like I like their focus and their. Um, putting their energy towards this game. And now just looking ahead to the game, were you familiar with Green Bay at all and their program? And what are you expecting tomorrow? Uh, you know, I've actually been kind of a fan uh, of Green Bay the last several years. I've, I've been able to watch them multiple times, except for this year. This is the one year I didn't get to watch them play throughout the season. But very familiar with their style of play, their brand of basketball, and how well they play together on the court. Um, that, you know, and how tough they are. So I, I've always enjoyed watching them play, and I understand what we're facing. It's, it's a really tough team, um, a team that executes at an elite level. Uh, you can pull up stats and see that. Um, and, and we know that, you know, it's a team that knows how to win. I think that's also a big, a big statement about that basketball club. Okay, so we're going to go here, and then we'll go one behind, and then we'll get you. Peter Katrumpus, Triangle Sports Network. Welcome back, Kelly. Um, obviously, you and Wes have a lot of connections um, as coaches, not only at major level programs, but those mid-majors. Um, so teams like Chattanooga, Tennessee, and Green Bay's, the Southwest Missouri's, et cetera. How much of a – do you go into the mindset differently as a coach um, or you have different expectations or, or challenges with entering the tournament uh, – you know, coaching those level of teams? Yeah, I think I think there's a different feel. I think there's a different vibe. Um, you know, when, when you come in, I know for from when I, my time with Wes at Chattanooga and then um, at Western Carolina and at Missouri State, uh, you, you go in this tournament, it's me against the world, or it's us against the world. Um, and it's, you know, you, you, you feel like you have a chip on your shoulder. Uh, when you walk into the tournament. And I think uh, you're, you're just out to prove that you're just as good and that you can do this and the world needs to respect you as well. Um, so all those feelings and all those emotions, I've been there. I know exactly what those teams feel when they step out on the court. Okay, stay on the outside there. Yesterday, Sarah used the word determined to talk about this team just since the SEC tournament. Have you seen a maybe deeper level of that in the response from the SEC tournament and going into this? Yeah, I think, uh, like I said, I think our level of focus has been really good. Uh, I think they have been on top of things. You know, just just me even observing body language in our film sessions, you, you know, they're, they're pretty locked in. You know, and as, as a coach, you hope that translates to the game. Um, when, when it's time to play, because they, they really have done everything right this week. Chapman, let's go to the green gentleman. There you go. Hey, Coach, welcome back. Uh, Ethan McDowell from the Wolfpacker. I was just wondering if there's any fond memories that stick out from your time at NC State. Yeah, I was trying to figure out where my office used to be located. It was, I think it was right over here. Um, it, you know, I think um, getting here, it's when you, you start – remembering some of those things and um you know just some of the it's it's not the big moments it's all those little moments you start remembering like there's a stairwell over there that's about as hot as anywhere in Raleigh um 
you know, and I walk by and I'm like, oh, that's it. That's that stairwell. Uh, you know, so it, it's just the little moments. Uh, but I think the people, there's still several people around that I've seen and, and, you know, just some very genuine, great human beings um, that, that I got to spend some time with here. So um, that's uh, some fond memories. Okay. Let's get Bob and then we'll go there. Yeah, I just kind of wanted to ask a similar question, but you mentioned earlier about the changes here at the Coliseum, and obviously you haven't been in a game day yet under the new look, but what, what, what did impress, what struck you when you saw the changes? Yeah, I had seen the plans, um, and I'd seen photographs, but I had not actually seen the, the court and, and, the, and how it's been rearranged. Uh, I think it looks great. Uh, that's, I think that's the first thing you walk in, and there, there is an impressive quality um, to the new design, and, and I think it's, um, you know, the, the one of the, uh, I think, goals was to, to squeeze it down and make it louder and more, and, and that's everything I've heard that's going to be loud, and I know that's exciting, um, but I think the modern, the modern twist to Reynolds Coliseum is pretty cool, um, and, and how it looks, especially in those, in those end zones, I think they look great. Um, and just even down um, underneath um, in, the, in the lower level, just just everything has been modernized and it, it looks cleaner and, and sleeker. Um, so I think it, it it's a, looks like a, an amazing place to play. Let's go in the aisle here. Jaden Watson Fisher with the News and Observer. Um, you know, obviously a lot of emotions, a lot of memories. As a coach, how do you kind of embrace that um, the reminiscing while also kind of compartmentalizing it so you can focus on, on the game that you have. Yeah, um, obviously it's fun to walk in and see these things, but um, when, it's, when it's time to go out here and practice or when it's time to go out here and play, we're, we're locked in. Um, you know, I don't think it's anything that I personally have to worry about, you know, in terms of emotions. Um, I'm, I'm super excited about our basketball team. And, um, you know, it's – I understand people are going to talk about the connection of, of me being at NC State, but uh, the most important thing right now is our team. And I know that, our team knows that, and we've, we've got to be locked in to who we are and what we need to do come game day. Okay, let's get Ernie, and then we've got two Zoom calls, and we'll be done. Jewel Spears, she played a lot, you know, in ACC transfer. How did her game transfer over – from the uh, ACC to the SEC, and uh, uh, she was great. She was a great player at uh, Wake Forest, and you know Wolfpack played against her. So I would just want to talk about her. Yeah, Jewel has been um, an outstanding player for us. Uh, I think a couple things off the court. She's she's been a great voice, a positive leader for us. We have loved that. We needed that, and um, her teammates and staff all love her. I mean, she's just she's just a player that you fall in love with really quickly. Um, basketball wise, it took her um, uh, some time this this season to get comfortable and comfortable with um, our, our system, how we were playing and what she needed to do with this level. Uh, she's talked quite a bit about how physical the SEC is and then learning to be successful in that physical game. I think she's broadened her game. Um, she's been able to score off the dribble more. Uh, her defense has improved and her ability to rebound has improved. We needed all of those things um, for her to be her best. And I think, you know, she she definitely was playing some great basketball late in the season. And I think that's just her confidence and comfort level with who she is on our team. And, you know, it's understandable. She she played in a system for three years and it was a very specific system. And then now you go to a new system and you're learning and, and finding your fit. But she is a super talented player and uh, we are so excited she's in orange. All right, we're going to take two Zoom calls. If we can start with Gabriella Lewis. Hi, Coach. Gabriella from the next. Um, this is your 42nd straight NCAA tournament appearance. What's that mean? But then also, how do you handle the pressure? You know, this is one of the few programs in the country where you make a, you know, Sweet 16 and it can sometimes feel like a letdown. So how do you deal with with both? Well, one, we're excited to to keep that streak going. And, and you know, I've I see so many great teams, great programs that, you know, on a given year may not be in the NCAA tournament. So uh, it's you don't ever want to take it for granted. Uh, I think it's, it's easy for Tennessee or Tennessee fans or 
you know, folks connected there to take it for granted because you've been there every year. But um, it's a big deal. It's a big deal to be in the NCAA tournament. Um, and then um, uh, in terms of the, the pressure of it, uh, I think for us just um, – Staying, staying in the moment is, is the most important thing. And, you know, our players get it. You come to Tennessee, our coaches get it. You come to Tennessee, it's just different. Uh, the expectations are extremely high each and every year. And, it, I mean, there can be pressure there, but it's also what makes Tennessee special and unique. Um, there's support at an elite level um, for our program. And our players come here because they want that. They want to – achieve all those expectations and um but on the flip side you got to be able to handle it when it doesn't go that way and I think um you know staying true to who we are um and like I said really focusing on the present enjoying each moment as we go I think those type things help okay one last question we'll go uh back to zoom for Maria Cornelius Hello, Coach Maria Quinnius, 247 Sports, Tennessee. Kelly, earlier in this season, you were questioning or wondering how tough this team was. They answered that question to close out February and, of course, in March. Physically, skill-wise, you can get better in practice. To mentally get tough, that is a different process. How was this team able to evolve from a team you wondered how tough they were to a team who showed you how tough they were? Well, Maria, they heard it from me a lot uh, throughout the season. We knew we had to grow there, and it's – you're right, a lot of that's the mental growth. And, and you know, I think the biggest thing is this team, the individuals wanted to do it. Like, they wanted to give us everything they had. They wanted to do what we were asking them to do. I think some of them had to learn what that looked like. So film sessions, um, repeating drills and practice, um, that it wasn't always about the execution. You know, it was about winning the loose ball. It was about teaching them what toughness was and what it needed to look like. And, and it's not just the physical, it's the mental. Actually, more so, it's the mental. And the growth there that our team had from November to February – was fantastic and they need to be proud of that I know I'm proud of them for that growth uh, that's not easy to do like you said you can get better a lot of times with your execution but in terms of just who you are on the court um, that's not always easy and I'm proud of proud of our team all right coach that's all the time we have thank you very much right. good luck tomorrow thank you guys uh, the next press conferences will be with NC State. Those start at 1225. Uh, I'd like to remind you that the media meal is available from noon to 2 in the far lobby.